As you know, we have arteries and veins. So let the name help you here. So A for artery, think away. This is where oxygenated blood is being pumped away from the heart. And the V, think for the veins. It vacuums deoxygenated blood back to the heart. Now arteries, as you know, are made of muscle. They are elastic, but not really meant to stretch a lot. So under pressure, it comes from that left ventricle being pumped out with so much force. When you palpate a pulse, we're really palpating an artery. Now the location of our major arteries are the locations of the pulses. For example, the radial, ulnar, brachial, and even femoral or carotid. So think thicker, bigger, and made of muscle is what makes up the arteries. What moves blood through the arteries is muscle contracting and that high, high pressure. Now for different arteries, anytime you feel a pulse, you're really feeling a different artery. So pulses are protected. You're feeling things that are inside medial to the body. Now switching over to veins, basically is the opposite. It's very low pressure. So think about that vacuuming back to the heart. Now these guys are able to stretch. They're able and supposed to dilate here. So let's just say you drank 10 bottles of water or got an extra IV bag of fluid or let's say your client is pregnant. There's dilation to accommodate that extra fluid. However, veins do not have muscle and high pressure from that big mama left ventricle. So veins rely on intrathoracic pressure change, as well as skeletal muscle contraction and even breathing. So when clients breathe, this helps move the blood through the veins. When we move and walk, this helps move the blood. For example, let's just say your client went on a long flight, or let's just say they're sitting for a long time. We tell our clients to pump their calves or to get up and walk around to keep that blood moving. Because the worst case scenario is if we stay still, we have stasis of blood, which results in clots. Hey, did you see the new study guide that follows along with this video? So cut your study time in half and increase your retention of the need to know key points and memory tricks that love to come up on nursing school exams. Plus, get 900 more videos not here on YouTube, neatly organized in the playlist. Try it for free. Visit simplenursing.com today. So now a key term to know is capacitance. Capacitance is that ability of the veins to stretch to accommodate extra blood volume in the body. So those veins are supposed to stretch. We like them to stretch. Mm -hmm. And they stretch especially if you have a patient with liver failure, congestive heart failure. But sometimes what can happen is if those veins, they only stretch to a certain point. Mm -hmm. And when they can't stretch anymore, they start to leak a little bit. And so when they start leaking a little bit, that's when we get that third space shifting. So that's gonna be our patient with edema. That will be our patient with ascites, our patient with fluid in their lungs. And then we hear those crackles. Mm. So veins have to have muscle movements. Since they don't have those muscle walls, we need our other muscles. So we need our calf pumps. So that's like when we walk around and move around, every time we do that, we contract our skeletal muscles. And so that helps to move the blood through our veins. Anytime you take a deep breath in, Great, you get that intrathoracic pressure change, and that also helps to move the blood through our veins. But so this is very important. We have to have competent valves and patent lumen. So with those valves, we wanna have one-way valves, and they help our blood keep going up, because remember, we need that vacuum, so we need it flowing one way and not to fall back down with gravity. Because then you can have regurgitation, pooling, mm. that's when you have those dilated, tortuous veins. Oh, the varicose veins. Yes, and yeah. so we want those valves to be working and competent to move the blood flow in the right direction. Now we see this a lot in the clinical setting. Anytime you're trying to get an IV, sometimes you can palpate a little bump, and that is typically a valve. So that's just preventing the backflow of blood. We don't want that blood to stay in the distal extremities. We want it to go vacuuming back to the heart. So also we wanna have that patent lumen. So we've talked about this word patent before. Mm -hmm. Do you remember with the nose when we talked about nostril patency, where yeah. you had to occlude one nostril and breathe in? Mm -hmm. So basically the word patent just means to have an open straw. Mm. So with our veins, we don't wanna have any clogs in the straw or basically a clot in our vein. 
So we wouldn't want to have anything that impedes that blood flow through the veins from getting back to the heart. And so veins essentially, when we apply that term, capacitance. Capacitance. They will stretch, but to a certain point, because if they stretch too far, then they start to spill. Hmm. Because if you think about these one-way valves, we want those valves to close nicely in order to work. Mm -hmm. But if they stretch too far, now those valves can't meet. So when you're trying to get the blood coming up from the toes and trying to work against gravity for that to happen, if that one-way valve isn't working or isn't closed tightly, then it won't be able to hold the blood. And so that's when you get those stretched out veins, those varicose veins, and you get that blood pooling in the lower extremities. Which makes sense. So capacitance is just simply capacity of the veins to stretch. Absolutely. So once again, why would this happen? Why would our veins get stretched out to capacity? Well, again, think about the blood volume being stretched out in the body. So pregnancy, we have extra blood volume. Mm -hmm. Congestive heart failure, just think HF, for heart failure, HF for heavy fluid in the body. Or even liver failure, we have that third spacing with ascites, all that fluid in the abdomen. Or even someone on their feet all day, like nurses, right? Mm -hmm. We get blood pooling in the lower extremities and the veins are being stretched out to capacity, so those valves are being stretched out further. Now, if stretched too much, then the valves can't meet, and so we've reached capacity with capacitance. So again, this is why nurses and hairdressers wear support hose, or basically those compression socks, right? And this just helps vacuum, or really just push blood from those lower extremities up back to the heart.